Before I used to sit on my tablet or with the computer and played on it all the time and listen to music. But now um, sometimes I borrow my mum's phone and I go up for a jog up the lane on my own and things to get some fresh air. And I do a, I'm a lot more active. I do swimming lessons and I'm in the school netball team. So yeah, I'm a lot more active. 80, 20, fruit and what we've done with the Healthy Lifestyles programme is um, take an approach where we use really engaging delivery methods to engage children and their family with the healthy lifestyle messages. So they're empowered um, to make the changes and it's not about telling them what to do, it's involving them uh, very much in the research. So it's something that teachers, children and parents are happy to be involved with. It's a really comprehensive programme and quite in depth. Um, the children have had the same strong but straightforward messages delivered in lots of different ways. They've done uh, rugby workshops, uh, food tasting sessions, break dancing lessons. They've developed an in-depth understanding of exactly what constitutes a healthy lifestyle and have been armed with the skills and knowledge they need to make healthy choices. I thought going outside and eating healthy foods would be just boring and I've just learned that it's not as boring as people think. It's actually really nice and stuff, if you make it nice and if you do the right stuff. It's really cool. The drama aspect is very novel and innovative and the way they use the characters for the children to work with and support really gets them to think about their own behaviours, but they're also role models. These are young actors coming into the school. The children absolutely love working with them. They form a bond with the children over the course of the year-long intervention, which empowers children, and it makes them sort of take ownership of the healthy lifestyle messages, and that's why help is very different to other programmes out there. Since this programme's been running, Jessica has been a lot more interested in healthy eating. She's encur been encouraged me to buy more healthy foods and to put it into a packed lunch instead of chocolate bars, which is really good. We have a situation um, globally and in this country where we've got um, one fifth of children entering primary school who are categorised as overweight or obese and when they leave primary school that's gone up to a third. So it's something that in terms of the health of the nation is absolutely vital but what is also important is that we develop programmes that engage parents and children and support them to make those changes and something um, that will lead to long term change, you know, one, two or three years down the line. Healthy snacks, <gasps> not, not one full of sugars and fats. Childhood emotional and behavioural difficulties are very common. About three children in every classroom will have difficulties that are impairing their development. So in STARS we're using an intervention that aims to enhance teachers' classroom management skills to see whether it improves child mental health, teachers' um, levels of stress and professional self-efficacy and children's academic attainment. We have taken an existing excellent intervention called the Incredible Years Teacher Classroom Management course which um, uses six one-day sessions spaced a month apart during which teachers come along um, in groups of ten and have a safe space in which to think about how they might do things differently. I think the main thing about STARS is getting you into the frame of mind where you don't always have to pick up on the negatives and that you're constantly celebrating the good things that are happening and I think it takes a while to get into that mindset but the more time I spent going to the course and having the training the more I realised how it changes the way that you think and when you come back into the classroom that you consciously need to think about picking up on positive things but the more you do it the easier it is to spot all the wonderful things that children do and praise them for that rather than focusing on the negative and just almost ignoring the negative things. We're about halfway through a five-year project and whilst we can't look at our hard data for another couple of years, we're already hearing from teachers that they feel the children in the classrooms are more settled, they feel better able to do their jobs and their classrooms are, are happier places. STARS training has given me lots of skills and tools that I can use. Um, it's made me look into myself as a teacher as I've had more things happening at school. I found that often my stress was half the cause for the behaviour in the classroom and the stars made me look at myself, learn how to calm down, praise the behaviour that I was looking for and actually be really specific with what I needed 
and it helped the children actually understand and use that kind of language with their friends as well. I've had two training teachers with me this year and they've um, I've been using the Star Studies um, training as part of my practice regularly. I've been talking about them from the moment they came to the classroom. As part of their training, they went to visit a teacher elsewhere in another school and a very good experienced teacher, but wasn't using aspects of the study. Um, and they came back and they could say, they noticed a huge difference in the way the classes were reacting. They were slowly getting more browbeaten and that was having an impact on how they approached the work. I've also had um, a teacher from another school come and visit me and she's watched the whole maths lesson and said, you've gone through a whole lesson there, have you realised? And you've not given anyone any sanctions. You didn't send anybody off in any way, shape or form. And the behaviour was perfect the whole way through. What we're doing now as a result of the Star Study is having far greater impact. And I think the children are a lot happier, they're a lot more engaged. I think their engagement and being told they're doing the right thing is making them more receptive to learning and more receptive to to make a progress. I was talking about shocks. Shocks look scary because they have very strong, no, very, very strong teeth. We're really excited to await our final results and we're already beginning to think about what, where next with this work and we're testing out how it might fit with children with severe emotional and behavioural difficulties, both in a mainstream school environment and also in special schools. So we're really excited to keep working with this project. Okay, well, you know, as a direct access patient, I can certainly make an appointment with the consultant and we'll get that set up. So normally okay. people get regular appointments with their consultant every few months. Uh, unfortunately, this might be when they're well and when they're unwell and have a flare up of their condition, they may not be able to get an appointment when they need it. So patient initiated clinics are a different approach to uh, seeing the, the consultant. So patients ring up a nurse advice line to start with when they have a flare-up and then the nurse will arrange an appointment either with the specialist or with the nurse specialist uh, within 14 days. So we've been working with the rheumatology team at Derriford Hospital specifically with people with rheumatoid arthritis and what we've found when we've been evaluating uh, this new service is that patients feel more in control of their condition, they feel confident using the new system and they feel they're seen when they need to be seen. The reason I think direct access has been so successful is because there's been patient involvement right from the very beginning. The patients were listened to, what they said was heard, it was incorporated in the plan itself and it's, a, it's allowed the safeguarding of patients to be paramount within the scheme. Direct access started here at Derriford with a small number of patients. Worked very well. The rheumatology nurse specialist became very confident in how the system worked. Where do we intend to go? Much wider, I hope. This is going to be very beneficial to a lot of people with long-term chronic conditions. As a patient, I feel now more in control of my condition. I'm seeing the person I need to see when I need to see them, and that is the big difference. It makes you feel more confident. It puts me in control of my disease and its treatment, and that is fantastic. Operational research is all about helping people to make informed decisions. Very often in the health service and in other industries, people make decisions without any evidence or with very limited or poor evidence. And actually by applying some modeling, simulation, data analysis techniques, we can help people to make better decisions. And we can do that by showing them what the impact of making those decisions might be. All of our projects start with the health service. People from uh, the NHS approach us and explain that they have a particular problem. It might be uh, cues in the system, it might be that they want to take a decision and they don't know what's going to happen. So our starting point is to talk to those people in the NHS. All of our projects take place very quickly. We understand that problems in the health service need to be sorted very quickly and in very tight timescales. So all of our projects take place within three months. And in that time, we can do some really useful things. Uh, we can give people the ability to make better decisions, and better decisions means better services, more efficient services, and in some cases, uh, patient lives saved. 
One of our chief aims uh, as part of Pencord and as part of the Clark is to build capacity to actually do some of these things uh, within the NHS. So one of the key things that we've been doing over the last few years is to run a training programme which is available to anyone working in and around the health service completely free of charge. And what we can do is to teach people some simple modelling, simulation, analysis techniques that they can do in their own organisations to just try and help make better informed decisions. In addition to that, we also run a seminar series every two months where we have an open invitation to anyone who wants to come along and hear more about our work locally and also more about the potential of operational research methods to apply to the health service. I'm Martin James and I'm a stroke physician in Exeter and I've been working with colleagues in Penn Clark on a project to improve the delivery of vital clock busting treatment to people with stroke. Our business in providing a stroke service is all about trying to reduce the amount of disability that people end up with after a stroke, uh, particularly as that's a lifetime of disability. So our focus was always on delivering as much treatment, clock busting treatment, uh, as possible as quickly as possible. We were very excited about this project because it came directly from the consultant at the hospital and it fitted very well with our methods. Uh, we could use computer simulation, which is a means of using a computer to model the pathway of a patient in that stage of their care. And um, we were able to then show that simulation for a range of different change scenarios. So when Penn Clark presented their results to us, we sat down as a team to look at how we thought we could make improvements from it. And it became quite clear that if we were alerted to patients arriving with the stroke before they actually got there, we would be able to shave off quite a lot of time on that patient pathway. So their patient flow is much quicker, their treatment is much earlier, and they're in the right place at the right time. If you look at the raw numbers, then what we saw happen over the course of the next uh, 12 to 18 months or so was more than doubling in the number of people who received clot busting treatment and also of course the time that it took to deliver the treatment came down dramatically as well again by almost half. But I think we saw another effect as well not just for those people who received the treatment but it seemed to spill over into the general attitude to people with stroke regarding it as a medical emergency where time was of the essence even if it wasn't just about clot busting treatment. We have very little understanding of what computer modelling it consisted of or what it meant but it was absolutely amazing. So for us to do this, traditionally, we would have had to get permission from the hospital, from the Board of Ethics. It would have taken us months and months to implement any change. Penn Clark came in, they did the modelling, and we were implementing change within weeks. And it's fantastic to see such an improvement in patient care so easily. Institute of Health Research, which is the part of the medical school that I'm mostly involved with, has grown enormously over the last 10 years, from 20 or 30 people to 300. And that was great, but it meant that we've been dotted all around in different buildings. What we can do now is we've managed to get everybody on the same site and in fantastic accommodation. It just completely transforms the possibility of people to work together, partly because they feel great about where they are, but also because we're all in the same place now. It's fantastic. The medical school has become an increasingly large part of the university, and I think it's helping us in terms of research, that we're building research links across all the schools. On this campus are a number of people with whom we have close links, so it's made it easy for us to do the research together. At the same time, simply the scale of what we've been able to do in terms of refurbishing buildings makes it so much better for the students and the staff everything else is being refurbished around us. The benefits of being in South Cloisters um, are twofold for us. Firstly, the educational facilities are state of the art. We have a new digital radiography x-ray room. We have a new ultrasound scanner in its own room and we have a fully specced lab for our students to work in which has been chosen by radiographers for radiographers. 
The reaction from our students since they've come into the building and seen the facilities has been fantastic. They've really engaged with the teaching in the building, they love the facilities and they've said they feel like they have a home. It's a really good place to work. Um, I look out of my window onto a beautiful green quad, usually covered in students. It's fantastic. I really like being here. The, the change from our old buildings, which, you know, we did the best, but they were dark and dank and not very pleasant to be in. Staff just love it here.